What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Reason We're Born. Uh, happy belated 4th of July for those of you who went out and blew shit up all over the place. Um, my co-host went someplace else to blow up shit. Um, how are you doing, Mr. Guardian? I am burning to death in Florida. <laughs> uh, Home of people who love to blow shit up eat for no reason at all. Actually, I flew in on the 4th, so on the drive to my mom's place, I did see fireworks over the road. Assholes, like, standing in the street setting off fireworks. Uh, maybe I'm just old and worthless, but I just don't care that much about fireworks, to be honest. I don't get as excited about exploding things year after year as everyone. Like, once I've done it a few times, it's over. I'm done. I'm moving on. You no, know, it's funny because I kind of liked them as a kid. I was never the kid that wanted to do the dumb shit like other kids love to do with them. You mean holding firecrackers till your fingers blow off? Or putting them in bottles and pipes and like watching them you know, blow up. Shit like that. Like, pro tip don't put an explosive in a glass bottle as that glass bottle now becomes like akin to an IDE. I mean, IED, you know, because the concept of an IED is pack an explosive with something that can be used as a projectile, such as glass. Maybe that's the point. I mean, is there anything more American than blowing shit up? I'm not even saying that it's like some sort of political joke. I think people just like that kind of thing. No, it is. Like, doing stupid shit because you think it's cool. That's the American way. That's why you have people who have lost limbs and fingers. It's funny because I was reminded of the football player. Guy was like a top defensive player. Blew half his hand off on the 4th of July. Had to play the rest of his career with half a hand. Hopefully the rest of you are better off. And enjoyed your fourth. Like I said, I spent the day mostly traveling, so it's not like I, I didn't really celebrate it or anything other than happening to see fireworks after their drive from the airport. It's good that you waited until the fourth, really, to travel. Nobody was traveling on that day, I'm sure. Perhaps, honestly, it wasn't intentional. I was supposed to travel a few days earlier, and my plane, due to technical issues, got delayed so long that I missed a connecting flight, and I just got fed up and canceled it and tried a few days later. Oh, wow. Damn. That's what that. <laughs> I believe I was, I left. What was the fourth? It was must have been a Sunday, right? I think I was supposed to leave uh, like a Wednesday or something like that, Thursday. I sat at the airport for like five hours and the flight just kept getting delayed until I was like, all right, I'm canceling this. And I had to wait a bit longer for them to go find my bag before I left. <laughs> so I accidentally got to travel on the 4th. So it probably worked out better. I mean, less of a headache because your flight probably got delayed due to like a bunch of dumb people anyway traveling like crazy for this holiday. Flight was delayed because the plane had a technical issue. No, but I'm sure it was because some dumb people probably did some stupid shit on the plane. They probably said technical issue. Probably was somebody who didn't want to wear a mask or some shit. That's my, that's what I'm saying. That would be interesting. <laughs> but, yeah. And then off note, I hear like there's a shortage of pallets now. <laughs> Which is maybe, weird. Maybe they don't wish to wear a mask. Oh, no. You, this is This is why you like should not feel sorry for these businesses. Who are screaming about they can't get employees? Because remember, when this whole pandemic shit went down, instead of just 
furloughing their employees, they outright fired a bunch of people. Now you got a shortage of people as things are trying to come back to normal. Probably wouldn't have that shortage if you would have just like, but like, look, we can't keep you right now, but we want you to stay. Like, at least do it in a more presentable way. Maybe they would have came back because you treated them better. But no, you just straight up like go. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't afford you. No, like, okay. Now you really can't afford me. Fuck you. I'll go someplace else. Yeah, it is an interesting thing. See, <laughs> watching as the nation tries to return to work and all the debates about whether we have a labor shortage or a wage shortage. Yeah. Of course, people are going to make their point based on the politics, regardless. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why we have less pilots. I mean, you've got less of everything at airports, actually. Um, all their employees, I mean, they're, they're light on employees. You know, come to think of it, <laughs> when I was sitting at the airport waiting and seeing that my flight was being delayed, there was no one there to talk to us, so maybe that was part of why. <laughs> yeah. No, like, the you know, TSA is having issues with finding people for security, less flight attendants to work the flights. That's why it's like, it probably was more than just a technical issue. And they didn't want to, like, come out and say, like, yo, we can't really keep up with, like, you know, our schedules. Because we kind of, you know, yeah. Because even with the technical issue, it probably would have been taken care of a lot quicker if they had more technicians and shit working. They probably don't have that many technicians and shit working. Well, I'm just grateful they didn't send us up in a broken plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's better to fight at the hypothetical issue while that shit is still on the ground. So I'll, I'll get over it. <laughs> I think a plane actually came down not that long ago the other day, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're good. You are good. All right. So we're kind of light on the topics because everything's been delayed and pushed back, switched up, blah, 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 blah. But there are a couple of um, things that I feel need to be discussed in the social world. Um, By the way, how has your vacation been? Uh, I'm not on vacation. I'm still working. (laughs) Otherwise, Florida has been, I mean, it's, it's, I will say it is the first time since the, you know, civilization collapsed that I got to see uh, my mother and my little brother. So that is nice. But you know what? That is the beauty of remote working is that you can still be paid and be anywhere. <laughs> it also can suck because if you have a job like one of my sisters, she's like, you know, head of a nursing. And when she goes someplace and she brings her work with her, it's not light work because she has to put. She spends all her time putting out fires, so you know there's pluses and minuses. I will say the time zone difference is interesting to work around because being on the East Coast as opposed to the West Coast, I'm three hours ahead. So one thing that's been nice is my meetings are later in the day, hmm. which gives me a little less anxiety because when they're early, I feel like, I don't know, this weird impending doom when it's like too close after I wake up. Uh, but the flip side of that is <laughs> when I need something done, I have to wait for everybody else to wake up. True. Because I, I was trying to, I was going out yesterday, I believe, and I wanted to get something done. I needed like an approval and all that stuff. So I, I worked a lot the night before that. 
And I didn't get it all done before I left for the day because nobody was awake <laughs> when I left for the day, even though it was noon here. It was just uh, 9 a.m. there, so they were just getting started. Or excuse me, I left at like 10, so it was just about 7 there. So a lot of them hadn't really started yet. Mm -hmm. So people have asked me like, oh, you know, why didn't you move back to Florida with your family and all that stuff? You know, during all this... Part of the reason was we didn't know how long it was going to last. You know, I had leases and stuff. Breaking a lease is expensive. I assume even more expensive in a place like California. Right. Uh, so I didn't want to introduce all that turmoil and all that stuff. And then also I didn't want to risk bringing a disease we barely knew anything about to my mother <laughs> at the time. But part of it too was just, yeah, working around time zone differences was going to be kind of strange. So there were many reasons, time zones being one of them. Not saying you can't work with it, but for people who want to work remote, that is something to consider if you work. The, the internet has brought the world closer together, but it hasn't altered time. Yeah, because it's funny. Before all this happened, um, someone I know has a friend. Her husband works for an international company, and they're someplace in Europe. So when they are having meetings, like he's in the West Coast or near the like Western time zone. So think about that. Like they're in Europe. Europe for like or for the Eastern Standard people, Europe generally is like no less than five hours ahead. So there's some place of probably five or six hours ahead of him. Now, the West Coast is three hours behind us. So if there's a meeting going on at 11 a.m. in Europe, it is, like, say, in England, it is 6 a.m. for the East Coast, which means for West Coast design people, what time is your meeting, sir? <laughs> yeah, three. <laughs> yeah, so imagine having to do that shit for a living. Like, Jesus, I would never. Fuck that. Yeah. My old place, we had a client in Australia, and luckily I wasn't one of the people oh that had God. to uh, deal with talking to them, but they, they were yeah. awake weird hours. To, yeah, to because work. they're 14 hours ahead of me, so that's 17 hours ahead of you. God damn. No, my old job was here in Florida, so same, Oh, it was but, in Florida, <laughs> so okay, yeah. well, 14 hours. But that's yeah, still that's, quite a thing. Like, they were up fucking... in the middle of the night doing right. madness. Oh my god, I fucking bash my head in. Anyway. It can um, be done, but yeah, it can bear be it done. in mind. Should, it, should you want to, just think about it. Make sure you pick the right like, you know, make sure you pick the right fucking um, situation so you don't have to fucking bang your head into a wall. So, um, some of the latest news that we missed, you got the infrastructure bill uh, that's supposed to be going through. Um, hijinks with Trump, of course. Uh, they're prosecuting the Trump Foundation. They are indeed. And the family's not too happy about it. They're also not too smart about it because I forget, was it Donald or Jr. or was it Eric who went on TV the other day? Did you hear about this? I didn't, but if I had to take a guess, I'd bet it was Jr. He seems more inclined to make media appearances. Yeah, so this idiot goes on TV and is talking about it because um, they're basically being prosecuted for you know misappropriation. Of funding, you know, not accounting everything, um, all that stuff like that. This idiot goes on TV and was like, well, yeah, every business does this stuff. All of our other people that we know, their businesses do these things. It's just a part of the business practice to do these things. Basically saying, you're like, well, yeah, I know we were doing it, but that's just what you do in business basically confessing 
that, yeah, I'm privy to the fact that we were committing crimes. I wonder what what kind of lawyers work for these people, like masochists? Can't like, why be would the, you... like, yeah, it can't be like it has to be the most brokest lawyer in the world who just needs a paycheck. Although I, I guess it also speaks to just a level of uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You know, the notion that you the world kind of owes you everything. <laughs> like they don't even feel like they're saying anything wrong. Like that's how you know somebody's like grown up rich and privileged. It's like, yeah, we can do terrible things. We're allowed to do that. We're Trumps. We're <laughs> that's the way of life here. Yeah, Maybe you it, guys don't get it because you're poor, but yeah, like when I heard the heard him say that shit, it was like, how do you at least not know, like? It's one thing to think that and to feel that way, but how do you really not like? I can't even. I can't even use the like. You grow up rich and privileged, so of course you're gonna feel that way. Like, come on. You got through four years of not like completely admitting to your crimes. This is the one thing that you think is like frivolous enough that you could come out and be like, "Yeah, it's okay." Because you don't have the protection of the White House anymore. You don't have your daddy sitting up there with a nice pardon for you and your brother. <laughs> you know, and anybody else who worked in that company. I mean, I don't know that they've survived this long because they're smart or anything. Maybe some amount of luck. I think know. they survived this long because they've had smart people who are willing to take their money and help them do so. But I feel like more and more the smart people are kind of like, yeah, even we can't fix this because you guys just do way too much. I feel like it's getting to that point now that all the smart people are starting to leave the room. Because I think it's just too much has been done. And they kind of flouted that shit during his presidency. Thinking that it's okay. Yeah, I think they just got worse over the last four years. And now it's starting to come to a head. I'm not just looking at an article where they were talking and it's just like the, the madness these people spout when they're in trouble the way they just kind of this tactic of attacking you know what about ism and all this stuff like oh you guys said you were going to find money from Moscow and all this stuff and what'd you find just a bit of money or whatever like after all the things you promised like what are you talking about dog really <laughs> your big argument here is that it wasn't from Russia like that should be a red flag. Right. <laughs> that makes me want to revisit the Russia thing. Yeah, I would want to revisit that too. It's like, are you saying there was something in Russia to look for? That we miss? What? Because, yeah, it's it's stupid. It's very, very stupid. I don't, their logic is just... Uh, but again, when you've gotten away with so much, can you kind of blame them? Yeah. I mean, like I said, they, they might think they're smart because they got away with it when I t- they've been getting away with it because even though getting away with it was not through any genius on their own part. Right. It's like you got a bunch of people who were able to pull shit out their ass for you. That all being said, it, you know, I get that the Trump organization is being prosecuted and all that stuff, but I think I mentioned this to you the other day. It's kind of hard to care about that kind of thing until things happen. And even in that sense, like, y- you know, the main guy they're talking about is the, the uh, CFO, whatever, Weisselberg, I yeah. believe. 
like it's not like I don't look at this and think finally they're gonna nail Trump's ass to the wall. Like so far, I don't hear Trump himself being talked about that much. No, as being directly they're they're and, they're going and after the organization. That's what makes his com- of- comments even more stupid. You don't have to say anything. You're not like I mean, like I said in the beginning, they you know, other people probably will end up being a threat because a lot of people are thinking that Weiselberg is going to potentially flip, or like in the process you'll have some stuff exposed during the trial because they're going to be going through records and things like that. But at present time, you're not directly the threat. Why do you feel the need to speak? on the issue at all or to say things like that. I mean, it, it lends to their whole, their tactic about dealing with anything is to essentially get out in front of the media and turn everything into this media cultural battle. I mean, for example, like does Trump really need to come out there and defend the rioters at the Capitol? Right. Like, and all these rioters he's been doing, much. why? He could just pretty much say nothing. Yet he feels the need to come out there and be like, you know, why do you have these patriots still in prison? He's like making it this, like I said, cultural media battle for no extreme reason. Like, it's not like, I don't know what he thinks he needs to prepare for what's going to (laughs) happen. They already haven't put him in prison or anything over that. So, and he's not president. Like, there's, there's no reason for him to be engaged in those conversations, really. I think part of the problem is that his addiction to attention was just amplified to an unbearable point while he was president. And now that he's not president, he can't live without that. So he has to continue to like amp it up in a way that is of no benefit to him. True, and I th- I do the reason I said, you know, between the two brothers, it was probably Trump Juniors because he seems to have a very similar addiction to the love and adulation of, you know, the the political group that loves his family. Not to say that Eric Trump doesn't talk to media; he does, but like, you know, compare all of them to somebody like Ivanka. All right. Ivanka does not really make that many appearances. She might say something stupid on social media every once in a while, but she's not really that inclined. Yeah, she to... doesn't put herself out as they do. And for that, she gets in less trouble. <laughs> Often when people talk about her, it's because she's... What's the word here? She's like... I don't know how to, how to describe it. Showing how, de- how detached she is from like normal life. Like, she might share a picture of her kids when the kids at the border is in the news. You know what I mean? Like, a certain, she, she displays a certain level of tone deafness, but that's mostly what people talk about when they mention her. Yeah. And yet, no one else in the family learns that lesson from her. Like, the more you shut up, the less hell you create for yourself. Yeah. Silence is golden. Nobody wants to believe in that. But hey, maybe eventually they'll learn the hard way. Her and Kushner were doing God knows what in the White House, and nobody gives a shit because, I mean, <laughs> we never knew. They never said anything. We barely saw them. It, yeah, was easy they, to, it was easy to forget they were there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. Um,. Haiti's president was assassinated this week um, at his home. And the country is once again in political turmoil. Um, Jeez, how many assassinations has there been? (laughs) You mean just in Haiti or in In general? Honestly, I can't pretend to know much about it. I want to say like it's been about two or three in my lifetime, but I may be quoting that wrong. Maybe I may be getting that mixed up with somebody someplace else. Um, but they've had a 
very, very tumultuous political history. Um, yeah. And it's kind of sad because the country has, it's funny because it's one of those countries that Trump would say is a shithole country. Yeah. Um, but I found something, the reason I wanted to bring this up because I found out something really, really interesting. Um, and I'm trying to find the video for you. Because on CBS uh, Morning News, one of the reporters brought up the fact that he started out his career being like um, the Haiti news correspondent for like his outlet. That was his big break. Um, and he was talking about how, you know, so of course, Haiti, like most places, was a, you know, colony, a European colony. And during, you know, the American Revolution, um, Haitians fought with us because, you know, French colony, they could use their, their soldiers. And so shortly after Haiti was freed, um, they got their independence. The French eventually let them become an independent uh, colony not too long after, I think in the 1800s. Now, not too long after they gave them their independence, France decided, you know what? You owe us for this. For the independence? Yes. So... They made an ultimatum. Give us reparations for your independence and you can maintain your independence. To which... I'm dead. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! To which Haiti, you know, had to agree because they weren't strong enough to fight. So until 19... I think he said until 1947... Haiti had to pay like about a hundred million dollars or whatever the I forget what he said, but it was a huge amount in reparations, like in total. Which is part of the reason why the country has been perpetually poor in its entire existence. Because until like post World War II, they had to pay a debt to France to be a free nation. They had to give France reparations for their freedom. I I guess I've never really known much about Haiti's history, but that is fucking amazing. I didn't either. And like, it was amazing to watch and I still can't find the clip because when you were listening to this guy talk about it, he was talking about it with the other correspondents on stage and like, he's black, and the other two are white. And the white guy, when he said reparations, his response was pretty much like yours, although it was more vocal. Like, wait, what? <laughs> and he could not rap, because he was like, he's like, yo, I've never heard of reparations being paid by former slaves to <laughs> for their freedom. That's a new one for me. He was just he was just like mind boggled at that whole thing. Which I was so, when I was listening to it. Maybe this isn't a popular thing to say at the moment. I don't know what life is like in France, but like, I feel like France owes Haiti reparations <laughs> like a lot. Yeah. At least, at least pay them back what they paid you. Yeah. And it's weird because this is the classic case of how beneficial, if you want to really think about it in the odd way, how beneficial critical race theory is <laughs> to history. Because who would have known some shit like that? 
like, it's without crazy knowing that, we that you would have just been really sitting around probably. I'm not saying you could be as far as Trump calling him a shit old country and stuff like that, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who just look at the stuff that's happened in Haiti, you know, pre hurricane that devastated the place, post hurricane the things that were happening with the Alsinger presidents and this assassination, all that. You would probably look at Haiti and be like, "Yo, these motherfuckers are wilding. What the fuck's wrong with them?" Well. Now you kind of can get an idea of how fucked up it is because they were never given a chance to be like, you know, be in a position to improve themselves a bit. Like it's been less than a hundred years since they got out of debt, y'all. When did you say they had to stop paying again? 1947 was when it ended. Yeah. So I was about to say, like, it's weird that we don't know that because it's, it was not that long ago. No. <laughs> like, it's not ancient history at all. That's, no, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is, it was literally a couple of years after the World War ended. There's motherfuckers a lot. <laughs> what the fuck? So, yeah, like, it's good to know how certain things can affect a culture. <laughs> because. You kind of like understand why certain things are within that culture. It's like hearing that shit. I totally like, like I've never said anything bad about Haiti before, but I really can't say anything bad about like, like I think it's fucked up with the assassination of their leader and all the chaos that's going on. But yo. It's just a fucked up culture over there. And, you know, you had corrupt leaders, crooked leaders. You know, I don't know much about this guy, but shit. I can't think that he was just, you know, assassinated for no good damn reason. Or like, like I don't... I mean, <clears throat> I wasn't. He's only been president really, for three, four years. God damn. I, I just want to point out, like, I wasn't really kidding. Like, I don't know if this is a discussion that happens in France, but, like, maybe the UN needs to force. Like, I feel like you owe these people some money. <laughs> like, that's pretty. I mean, it, it wasn't just enough to colonize and enslave them, but you made them pay money after that. Yeah. That's like if the school bully that like takes your lunch money every day stops for like a week and then he's like, I feel like you owe me money for the favor of not taking your lunch money. So give me your yeah, allowance. Like pay instead. me not to beat you up. Okay. <laughs> That's literally what they did. They they bullied him, took his lunch money, and they were like, I won't take your lunch money anymore unless you pay me. <laughs> We all just live here now, 2021, and like nobody's really dealing with this. <laughs> yeah, because you gotta think, everybody knew that shit. It wasn't like it was something that wasn't known. I'm sure for this reporter to be able to tell you that shit, like it clearly is written somewhere. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it almost it, it almost makes the reparation discussion we have here. Feel kind of petty. <laughs> you had a completely different country taking a hundred million dollars from you. Right. They taxed them because they didn't want to be slaves. <laughs> and as former slaves, they were obviously a poor nation. So it's like <laughs> Right. It's not like this, it's not like you're making America pay that much money. Right, they were never that, able but... to, like, they did it, it. Yeah, it's just like, what if Britain would have did that to America? America had a chance to establish itself and to get itself out of the debt that they were in to pay off the debts with France, oddly enough, um, to, For, like, it's, Fran- <laughs> <laughs> you know, because France helped us financially and with, like, you know, our people in the war, so, god damn, France, yo, 
we we'll had to look at the history of France a little bit more. France is kind of like we've always I've always had like an impression of France being this weak nation in a way because of what happened in the world wars. Like every time the like world wars generally seemed to pop off, France was one of the first places to get overran by the Germans. You know? And it's like England had to come to the rescue, then we had to come to the rescue. It's things like that. You know what I mean? But now I've got to think in like maybe that was kind of come up. It's <laughs> <laughs> France does not play with its money. Because <laughs> for yeah. France kind of was like fucking like bully boys back in the day. I said never I don't know what my emotion toward France was before, but like these are some real hustlers. Like they're not played around. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but yeah, they're, that, he, they're that dude in those like crime movies. It's like they're not like the heavy, they're not the muscle, but they're the ones that will like take your children for ransom, you know? What I'm saying? Like, right, they're that little dude that's always in charge for some reason. I don't kill you, but I got the like capabilities of kidnapping your family and shit like that. Like, I'm not the guy who's gonna pull the trigger. But I'm going to get your people to the guy who's going to pull the trigger or whatever. Like, yeah. Kind of. But yeah, like, just imagine if the United States never really got to, because we end up going back to war with um, England again in the War of 1812. But you got to think between, you know, 1780, 1812, it's a good 30 year period before, you know, people start fucking with you again. France, like, Gave them their independence and then came back a few years later. Like, nah, look, listen here, y'all gonna have to pay up. So y'all not gonna send us a thank you note or nothing <laughs> after we gave you freedom? Okay. Right. <laughs> Bruh. No, I need I need somebody with some real like women. Power to I bring beat you up. for twenty years and we got a divorce. I should be the one getting alimony. <laughs> like, it's, no, I'm not going to take care of the kids. I just want the money. Right. Like, it's, oh, France, it, France owes them something for real. That is crazy. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's a, I need bring back Barack and make him bring this shit up. All right. Or Biden. Biden, you do it. Bring this shit up with France. They need. They need to address this. <laughs> yeah, like talk to Dreamboat over there about this. Like he he needs to fix this. Seriously. But yeah. Speaking of things that need to be fixed, legal deals shouldn't be able to be made to get people off of crimes they committed and to never ever have them prosecuted of it. What am I talking about? Everybody's favorite father, America's dad, as he was once known. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was let out of prison on a technicality. The technicality being in previous court uh, procedures revolving around Bill Cosby being accused of raping over 50 women. The prosecutor gave him a deal in his deposition uh, in, in exchange for his deposition that was sealed for 14 years before his trial, his um, later trial, which ended up having him convicted to, uh, um, for these rapes, he made a deal that he would not be able to be prosecuted ever for said crime. The lawyers argued that in appeals and the uh, Supreme Court of Pennsylvania ruled that yes, because he had that deal made, the his the case should have never came to trial to begin with. Therefore, if it just should have never came to trial, he should have never been able to be convicted and sent to jail. All charges dismissed. Bill Cosby's released after three spending three years in jail. How you feel about that? What was I think I missed it. What why did they make that first deal? Like what was the point of that? 
<laughs> in exchange for him pleading to it and having it put in the sealed docket so that they could settle it in, I guess, you know, civil court, you know, him paying off people, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, like, why exactly. Um, and I've been told that the prosecutor actually has come out and spoke on the whole situation because he, he's, of course, getting heat for that. Um, but I have to imagine, like, because Bill Cosby is Bill Cosby, and he has a lot of, he's had a lot of sway in the city of Philadelphia anyway. Um, and, you know, hey, we got to protect our rich people, right? Sometimes <laughs> even if they're black, sometimes even if they're black, y'all. I guess the reason I ask is because, you know, I listened to that and I'm like, all right your job was to prosecute this motherfucker. Like, your whole goal should have been to make him pay for his crimes. It's like, why would you... Why why would you make a deal like this at all, but one so extreme where he couldn't be prosecuted for it ever? (laughs) That's that's step one. Like, I didn't understand the motivation behind them making any such deal. And two, I I don't think any such deal should be able to be made. Yeah, I can't imagine that there's any viable reason to do so, to be quite honest. Especially when you have so many people accusing him, because I don't and now I don't think it was for all the women who came out and accused him eventually that came up during this last trial, but it was more than one woman, as far as I can remember, that he had like made this confession to or and had sealed in the records all that time. But I think the more important thing to like remember is beyond just the stupidity of the deal is the fact that he got this deal by admitting to his crime that's what i was about to bring up it's not like (laughs) they made that deal with him to get information about something more important out of him like I don't. I don't even understand the nature of the deal. He admits to the crime. So, what? Arrest him. <laughs> what did you get out of a deal? Sort of implies that both parties get something out of it, and I don't know. What I just you feel got. like he had to feel some type of public pressure because, again, like I said, Bill Cosby had been a very influential for, figure in the city of Philadelphia. Um, you know, he's had ties to um, Temple University. He was actually on some of their committees. He would shit. He was actually one of the people they would go to to interview, like for the athletic department, which I find wild. Um, because if they had to hire a new coach, they he had he was one of the people who they had to like live up to. Like he he's had has a lot of pull. Why? I I'm sure he went to Temple University. So, so the ergo, is he an athlete? Yeah, so ergo, you know, hey. Uh, that's just, that, that is an obsession with celebrity board, and that is idiotic. <laughs> like, what qualifications or connections must he have to warrant any such procedure? Like, I mean, and he's probably donated a lot of money to his alma mater, so that's probably, and that's why so, I say, like, his money, but it's, that's the thing. He's his money has given him that power, and that's probably what it is. It's like because of his money, you know. Remember, this is the guy who purportedly was supposed to be able to buy NBC. So hey, whatever. <laughs> you know they wouldn't let a black man get NBC. So yeah. The- <laughs> I can't remember what the, what the discussion was, but I remember asking you some like random legal thing a few podcasts back <laughs> because I, I was just identifying a part of the legal system that made no fucking sense to me. And this is yet another one. Like, I don't yeah. understand being even able to do something like this. Yeah, I mean, and it's not unheard of because I've heard of similar stuff. I can't remember exactly what, but I've heard of similar stuff with people confess the stuff and put it 
and seal depositions and just like we'll just settle this in civil court. You want you want a couple of million here? I'll give you a couple of minutes. So that's generally what civil court is for. If like if I can't get you to go to jail, then I'll get you to pay for your crime, which is mind boggling in itself to me. <laughs> um, I don't understand that the way you explained it because if they're going to pay monetarily for the crime that is an admission of guilt anyway yeah, no? because so they you have shouldn't... to be like for you to have to pay someone clearly you have to do a actual court case like you would have with his deposition and people have to say yeah the evidence shows you're guilty <laughs> so if you couldn't win <laughs> right because that's what happened with oj oj was found not guilty in you know the criminal trial but he was found guilty in his civil trials. Wow. <laughs> Our legal system, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Stupid as shit. I will say, I know, you know, I know how upsetting it is, but I, I don't agree with the sentiment so many people had. Like some people talking about like, oh, justice is served he's not proven innocent that's what i wanted to get to next thank you for bringing that up (laughs) (laughs) i saw people on both sides of that you know people who were angry at his release and people uh, and i remember messaging you this saying this that i was surprised that there were so many people wrongfully i should not have been surprised but i was surprised that there were so many people happy about his release and they were saying like see innocent blah 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 it's like he's being released Essentially because he had already admitted to doing it. There's no innocence that was yeah. established here at all. It was like a technicality, a technicality born through the fact that he admitted he did it. That's what makes it funny. It's not like a technicality, like they made a discussion and they knew they couldn't get enough. So they just asked him, you know, hey, we'll leave you alone if you agree to like pay them. Because that's not the agreement. No. He had to confess. Right. <laughs> so again, and I saw this reaction on both sides of the aisle with this. And it's like, I, I, maybe this, this comes with the legal system being kind of stupid, but people aren't even reacting to true things. They just see he's out, which automatically must mean that he was innocent. Yep. And I, maybe there's something to say about the news coverage with that that doesn't make it clear enough in headlines or something. I don't know. And maybe all the headlines need to say released on a technicality or something to make it more clear to people. But so many people seem to take this tact that, like, they've essentially established that he's innocent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are making the more social point that it, this is a shot against all the women who suffered at the hands of, you know, people like this guy. And it's like, I. I, I do think it's a travesty of justice that he's free, but I don't think it's fair to say something like that. He Again, he got off because we have flaws in our system. That's it. Yeah, like... It's dumb. And, and arguably inept prosecution, I guess, if, if you want to make that argument, but that's it, as far as it goes. Yeah, like... I feel like something needs to happen. Like that prosecutor, he's not prosecuted no more. I don't know what he's doing now, but if he's still in the legal system, he needs not to be. But you can't do that because technically he did what the law allows him to do. So like, damn, like like this is all fucked up in every way. (laughs) I don't like the weird like i i guess i understand it but like quotes from like his lawyer and their team and all that like you know he's happy to be out he's always maintained his innocence blah 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 like look he's out and it sucks do we have to pretend like it's a positive thing really yeah can't you just shut up (laughs) you know and this is part of the reason why felicia rashad uh felicia rashad got in trouble you heard her comments right i did not she got on social media and was like, a great injustice has been, you know, righted, and I'm happy to see that he's out. And, of course, social media went in on her. 
um, got so bad that she was her job was threatened because it's, it's funny. I was just listening to a podcast that made a good point about this. So Felicia Rashad right now is the dean of um, the Chadwick Boseman School of Arts at Howard University. I did not know there was such a thing, but yeah, oh yeah, was- um, they changed their um, art school to his name, like right before uh, Black Panther. But yeah, because hmm. he went to Howard University. I mean, um, I did always argue that movie was like a huge cultural thing, so yeah, can't say that that's a terrible decision. But yeah, or anything. she's the dean. And people were like, maybe we need to fire her or she should lose her job for this. Um, you know, so she put out a bunch of apologies and things like that. And it's now I've quieted down some. Uh, so do you think they should have fired her? Well, it's funny because the podcast I was listening to, they made kind of a good point. As an actress, because when she like... Um, made all this controversy a couple of other actresses who had worked with or known um bill cosby like uh i never forget her remember her first name i know her last name's reed but you know um you've seen fresh prince right yeah the second aunt viv oh she had made a comment to her she was like um you do realize you're saying this knowing that we all knew that he was doing shit back in the day right uh, you all knew her, huh? <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's like everybody knew, and everybody people said stuff, but it, understandably so. You, I'm sure, it was the culture of, yeah, you say something, like you're gonna get hit because Bill Cosby is a big thing, especially in black culture. Can you imagine coming out and saying something about Bill Cosby, like during the run of the Cosby Show? As a black actor or actress, especially as a woman in that era. Career to be over, probably not. Right. So it's it's part of the reason why Beverly, you can understand why Beverly Johnson didn't say anything about her incident after it happened. You know? I was going to say, even if they felt like they had the power or security to say something like, you know, given the era, it might just not have mattered enough. No. I hate to say that, you know, people didn't care enough about women, but people didn't care enough about women. I mean, you're talking about a man who went on Larry King openly during that era and made jokes about using Spanish spy on women. There you go. So. So, yeah, I'm not... uh... (laughs) I'm not attacking them for not saying nothing, but yeah, even if it doesn't really matter because the evidence was pretty overwhelming, right? Like they didn't get him for no reason. Right. So to say the injustice thing is just really, really stupid. I don't know if you need to lose your job over being that stupid, but well, one of the uh, back to what I was saying about what I was originally saying about the podcast is one one of the people made a point that as someone in charge of a school that features people like in your craft, how are you going to deal with issues of women within the school who have um, sexual assault, you know, claims? How are they going to feel coming to you knowing that you are like, yo, I'm glad this guy who like date raped over 50 people is free friend or not right <laughs> well it kind of makes it like I get it because like how I, I get it in that sense definitely honestly I, I guess I apply the same thing I had said about him and his team and all that stuff it's like look for some reason you managed to get out of this i guess yeah just take your win and shut the fuck up <laughs> you could just not say anything about this 
Yeah, I hope you never see him on TV talking about this. Like, please don't give this man an interview. Right. Like, I please just... don't give him a platform to talk. If he gets on Twitter and says some shit, okay, that's fine. That's him on his own time. You know, but please don't draw attention to this man. Ignore them. Like, just let him go away. He's in his 80s. Um, you know, I can't imagine he's going to be alive. Like, you know, I, and don't take this the wrong way, but I can't imagine he's going to be alive too much longer. Let him live the rest of his life in his home peacefully and out of the public eye. You don't need to make him a martyr for, for you know, legal injustice or anything like that, because he's not. Um, you know, you don't need to like repair his career. Again, he's 83. How much TV is he going to do anyway? And do we really need him to be on TV with this over his head? No. Go. Cool. Let him go. Just, yeah. Stop fucking celebrating someone getting out of like and it's funny because all y'all motherfuckers out here celebrating him getting off on a technicality i don't want to hear y'all say shit about people like paul manafort or robert stone or any other white person who gets off on some bullshit i was, I was just about to ask if you've seen all those memes with um it's it's like Cosby and OJ, you know, running away free while uh, the Tiger King guy is still in prison. Yeah, um, I haven't seen those, but no, like, don't celebrate this shit. Like I said before, I do did find it amusing. Um, in a sense, like we were talking about this before, and I did say I found it amusing in a sense, um, that you do have white people who are calling, like, this is, a, you know, injustice of the legal system when the same type of quote-unquote injustice happens to people, such as Paul Manafort, with Matt, Paul Manafort, Robert Stone, they don't have anything to say, you know. I find that weird like you defend that but this is you know highly wrong i found it amusing in that same way i said like i found the oj thing amusing in the sense that you know this guy who probably is guilty as hell got off because he was able to afford enough a, a good enough legal offense to fucking mind fuck the jury and get away with this shit you know, like, welcome to how regular people feel all the time. <laughs> but outside of that, no, I have no fucking joy. I'm, I'm one of those people who are generally pissed that this motherfucker was able to walk out like that. Like, no, he needs to be in a jail. He needs to spend the rest of his life in jail, which is what he probably was going to do. And no, I, I don't feel like the justice was served, but I understand how the legal system is. I'm like, eh, fuck it. He got he he got lucky. I, I mean, you know, talking about how money is used in the legal system, I just find myself thinking, like, if he was just a regular dude, could he have possibly gotten any such deal? <laughs> no, we've seen countless of people recently be released from jail from like. 10, 20, 30, 40 years in jail for crimes they didn't commit. And then they finally figured out, oh, you didn't do this. I bet. Because they couldn't afford the legal defense to, like, you know, help prove their innocence. People who were just, like, put in jail just because they just happened to be that person in the area at the time had nothing to do with the crime but they fit the like description you know so fuck it 
you, we're taking your life. And we're going to cross this one off the books. Imbalance. I mean, it, 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 I, find, I find so. it funny, you know, talking about the race issue that people keep bringing up, like, oh, see, black people, white people, there are black people who can get away with this shit too, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I understand wanting to talk about racism all the time, but this is a very big example of class difference. Right. <laughs> I, I can't imagine getting away with something like what he got away with. That's why, like I said, I brought up the OJ thing to you when we talked about this offline, because these are very two unique situations that you have two very rich, highly successful and famous people, not just within the black community, but within the white community as well, who have a lot of influence, who got away with some, like, you know, shit. One literally with murder, but, you know, and one figuratively with murder. One with murder and one with mass rape. <laughs> right. I was, I was thinking about the... Uh the Chappelle skit he did or skit joke he made during one of his more recent specials when he was talking about the Cosby she was like this nigga was putting up real numbers I was like bro because I mean really think about the number of people involved in all this the guy's a monster there was like 50 60 women who like testified to that shit the guy is a serial rapist yeah there is no justice in his freedom no, there is it. Ugh, it's gross. And the sad thing is, when you when you first started and you brought this up, and you mentioned you know being America's dad, I did have this momentary flashback to growing up watching the Cosby Show, and you know all these fucking little lessons that Cosby would teach his few kids. Right. So it's very, but even I have, have memories of it as a beloved show, and I'm not even that old. I, I must have caught it on like Nick at Night reruns or some shit. But like, yeah, it, it had major social impact, just that one. Mm-hmm. And other projects, like, I think he did Little Bill or whatever when I was a kid on Nickelodeon. Uh, Fat Albert, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, I was about to say Fat Albert. He's done a lot of like things that have had social impact. Um, in so the when people and remember the him fondly. It's not like I don't get it, but he wasn't what you thought he was. And you should be able to deal with that. Yeah. Same thing with any of your beloved sports heroes. Like, sorry. <laughs> no, it's true. Like, as a player, I always thought Charles Barkley was a great basketball player, but he's kind of a shitty human being in a lot of ways. Um, Michael Jordan. You know, probably the greatest basketball player ever. That man fucking had a mistress in every NBA city in an apartment that he paid for. Oh, that's fucking money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here just the other day complaining about how expensive my apartment is, and this dude had a fuck house in every state. Right. Every city, rather. You know, these are like, yeah, no, not everybody who you like that's famous are, you know, pristine. Like Bill Cosby on the Cosby show ain't necessarily Bill Cosby in real life. I'm sitting here thinking about how this man told people to pull their pants up while being a rapist. Really? Right, the you're sitting here, shit. Lecturing, you're sitting here black like, lecturing black people on how to behave and how black, how to like, you know, how fucked up you are for your culture. And like, so you raping 50, 60 women ain't fucked up for our culture either? Okay, fine. Sure. <laughs> this man is wild. The audacity. Like, you checking me for spending money on expensive shit I don't need and you're out here buying drugs to rape women. Okay. All right. You got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you can get sex. <laughs> and even if you didn't have did have or did even if you do or don't have a wife, you're also famous and got money. Which 
generally leads to like women wanting to like fuck you anyway. See Michael Jordan. <laughs> Say what you will. He did. I assume he did not rape any of those people. Right. <laughs> that was at least that was not faithful in his own relationship, but that was a consenting situation. Yeah, like they were all women, <laughs> willing. I, I don't know why that popped in my head. I'm just thinking of like the condescending tone this man had judging everybody else that he's committing mass rape. Like, right. I don't even know if that's a term, but like that's how crazy it is. Like the man's number of crimes. Yeah, he was a serial rapist. The and this nurse. was the guy who had jello pudding pops in everybody's house out there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling when you think about the public image he had. It's like, I don't even remember. I can't remember a time he ever even used profanity, like this super he clean nope. image. Because he, he was a comedian as well. Never cursed as right. a comedian. You never saw him curse in any any roles that he did or anything. Which is rare for comedians. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he maintained that entire aura about him while being a serial rape. Like, mm-hmm. I remember I had an ex who used to mention how much profanity I use. And I'm, now I think about it, like, you know what? This notion you guys have that like cursing equals being a bad person or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, Cosby. All right. yeah fuck this guy and I don't know man somebody become president and fix all this because apparently presidents can do everything <laughs> yeah that's what they're supposed to be able to do is just wave the magic president wand and Biden hurry up and rewrite the whole legal system this shit is a joke yes re re like form the entire system that was partially built to keep you from being able to run amok <laughs> what do we put you there for if you're not going to do fucking anything you asshole damn shame so this is a perfect segue to our next subject because I'm actually watching the Olympic trials right now for some reason I'm watching the Olympic swim trials of all things um I don't know. I, I get like this. I'm sure a lot of you get like this around the, the Olympics. Shit you don't never care about or never watch, you find yourself engulfed in because it's the Olympics. Do you find yourself doing that? I'm sorry? Do you ever find yourself watching the Olympics just because it's the Olympics? Usually somebody else has to like get me into things like the olympics or like the world cup for example like i have a friend who for some reason was like watching volleyball one year for the olympics and he you know he he got me on to watch it and all of a sudden i got really into it for that (laughs) i got good i think like the u.s team was doing fucking phenomenal it was the women's team rather doing amazing that year the women's they tend to be the more competitive in volleyball especially beach volleyball and that probably helped keep me into it too, because I was like, "Oh wait, we're actually doing pretty fucking good. We might win." Like, maybe if we had like lost immediately, I would have been less intrigued. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I get glued on, especially the stuff that we really, really are good at. Only other thing is like sometimes I'll watch Olympic uh, Taekwondo and Judo just because. I grew up liking martial arts, but like I don't follow it outside of that. I just kind of. I actually found myself being very fascinated with fencing too, in the Olympics. <laughs> there was one year I watched rowing for a while, and I can't explain. <laughs> yeah, if, like I said, if I see it, I'm gonna watch it. And I actually saw it, and I was like, "Oh!" And it's like this ain't even the Olympics; it's the Olympic trials. This is for people to make the Olympics, and I'm still like, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I, that's a good way to put. It. Like, if I see it, I'll I'll probably get into it. Like, if a friend like puts it in front of my face, I'll probably stick with it till the end, at least. But also, I will say I get sucked into these stories when I hear like, 
you know, the Simone Biles, the, you know, people like that, the Michael Phelps things, like all of those stories definitely do come out and be like, yo, this is an interesting story. Like, oh shit, this person is from here, the girl who won the cross country thing, I'm going to watch. Uh, I might have a harder time catching that because, like, sometimes it's on mute. Like, I remember last time I watched Olympic judo and taekwondo, it was mostly at work. So I just had to mute it the whole time. So I don't get as much of a connection with them. Uh, I think part of the reason... And they, and they wear, like, helmets and shit, too. So, especially for judo, rather. So, it's, or for taekwondo, they wear helmets. So it's kind of hard to see their face and gain that connection with them. Uh... But I do remember the volleyball thing. I think because I stuck with them and it was the same group of girls the whole time, like I did start to be like, yeah, th- yo, that one really tall chick, she's so badass. Wish she be like, The longer I get to stick with a certain person, the more connection I grow, but. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I might check it out this year now that you brought that up. I know that's not why you, you brought well, this, this year's going to be up. fascinating. Um, and it's funny because it's not even the actual topic. Well, let's go to the topic that I want to talk about first right. as far as re- Olympics is revolving around. And then we'll talk about the other such stuff, which is actually a lot more impactful than the story. So Shikari Richardson, um, U.S. sprinter, who is amazingly fast and had become super famous because of her speed, has also become an unwilling tool, political tool in the conversation of marijuana um, use and its legality. Uh, So after winning her Olympic trials and being qualified for the um, 100 meter sprint, you know, to fight as to try to see if she could win the gold medal and be considered the world's fastest woman, um, she, failed a drug test. She had smoked marijuana. She admitted it openly, said that the reason that she did so was because she had just got the news that her um, birth mother had passed and it affected her. And she knew that if she did it, she would get in trouble. But, you know, she used it as a coping mechanism anyway, knowing that this could cost her, um, which it did. She owned up to it. She, you know, never shied away from the fact that she should be suspended. She was like, she took the responsibility and was like, you know, I'll just have to wait for the next opportunity and whatever like that. You know, it was my decision. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, the internet and everybody like, who likes to make a big deal about shit for no reason felt differently. Everybody is very upset that the Olympic committee decided to ban her for a month. By the way, the rule for um, the Olympic committee states that if you are caught using a bad substance of any kind, um, non-performance banned substance of any kind, you are suspended for three months. So they actually were light on her. They gave her one month, which would have cleared the door for her to be on the uh, relay race if they chose to add her to the Olympic team. But they decided instead of doing that and taking a slot from somebody who was going to be running in all races, they kept her off of that. So she's not going to be at this year's Olympics at all. Um, She's 21. She still got like you know another shot at the Olympics. I don't think she's going to slow down anytime soon. So, in fact, she's probably going to get faster by the time she's twenty five, <clears throat> as most people you know in their twenties as they grow strength, <laughs> they do so. So, yeah, I think she's going to be all right. But um, people are losing their shit because they feel like this is, again, an injustice. 
Um, there have been people who say that we should boycott the Olympics um, because of this. And of course, you know, my favorite is that this just shows how unfair black athletes are treated. What are your feelings on this situation? I mean, first of all, as far as her response goes, because I do, I can't remember the exact quote, but I did read a bit of her response, which was like you said, essentially just, you know, I'll, I'll own up to what I did or whatever and move on. In fact, the fair response, like, because I think when you started, you, you mentioned her as like sort of an unwilling tool of political propaganda here a bit, but it's, it's pretty accurate because she's not really gotten up on the soapbox to fight over racial issues or, uh, you know, marijuana the marijuana debate or anything. She just kind of said what she wanted to say and moved on. Is everybody else is kind of using her for what they want out of it here. Uh, so I do think that's a bit unfair. And that's something people in social media tend to do a lot. They, they use people as a symbol and then don't think about the people. Yeah. And also there's been some negative pushback of people, of course, as always, <clears throat> the people who don't agree with the people who want to make her a martyr. Um, they try to make her a scapegoat because I heard that there was some controversy over her um, saying she's still a fan of Chris Brown's, so or a supporter of Chris Brown or something. So. Oh, that is a choice you can have, I guess. It's not fucking irrelevant or interesting. Yeah, <laughs> but you know how it is on the internet, like especially if you become someone who a certain society or a certain like group thinks, oh no, you're becoming too powerful or you're becoming too much of an influence on certain things. We got to cut you down by like, you know, doing like you did Chrissy Teigen or James Gunn and pulling out shit from when you were like a kid or something and show how horrible you are as a person. I don't maybe it's not important, but like I don't remember her saying or doing much. You know, she had a very impressive athletic performance, I suppose. Like I mean, people were I I mentioned this before, but like people were admiring her and, and in large support and supportive of her in part because she was black, right? Like I don't think that's insane for me to say that. No. That's not to take away from her talent or anything. She, like I said, she is talented, very athletic. She earned well, it, every all of it. But yeah, no, it is in part of her black. Although I will say, like, it's also mostly because, again, like me with these stupid fucking swim trials. When the Olympics are around, especially right. when it comes to track and field, track and field has always been like the highlight. Um, one of the or one of the highlight, like track and field, women's gymnastics. I guess you could say basketball now because they send our pro players there. You know, those are generally the spotlight things or the, or the Olympics. So you always get a light shine brighter on those particular things. Um, and, you know, we have a real big history of like female celebrity um, track athletes. So she was being built as the next one, I guess. Um, but yeah, because she's also black, too. Sure. Yeah. That's not yeah. a negative. I'm just pointing out that like, it's not like, as far as I can tell, oh, no, I'm not saying falling this, yeah, for saying, her yeah. because she had said anything super deep or interesting. She was an impressive athlete, and there's certain social context to that. But like, I will say this, though, because I think part of her blackness, and I think we talked about this before, that's more unique to people is because you mentioned like how people were talking about her nails and stuff and uh, like her look seems to be something that people focus on not just the fact that she's black but she's a black woman who's like you know got the nails the red hair she wears the doritos earrings you know look at her and all that 
which oh, right. to the me Doritos earrings forgot about that. Which to me I find hilarious because it's like you know she's not unique in being a standout visual in female track because I mentioned to you look up Florence Griffin Joyner and there's a couple of like Gail Devers comes to mind too it's like it, there seems to be a history of flair in particular with like black female track stars so. It ain't brand new, y'all. Y'all acting like she's stepping like out of the box and creating this image that no, like you know, society can't handle. And she's being bold and black in her in doing so. Nah, this is this is normal. <laughs> Calm down. It's normal fair. Right. Remember <laughs> history. Remember life existed existed. Way before social media. I keep trying to tell you all that. The main reason I bring this up is, you know, <laughs> not to shit on anybody who likes her because she's black. I get I get it. But it's the, in, ref, in response to the Chris Brown thing is that I don't believe most people know anything about her personality or her beliefs or anything. They just kind of saw images of her on social media and know that she was successful in drag. So... You know, like let's let's say she has like a bunch of crazy things, like maybe she's anti-vax or something like that. For example, if she was, I don't feel like you guys knew enough about her to know one way or the other. So I, I think there's a tendency for people to just fall in love with certain images or personalities right. without knowing anything about a person. <laughs> and again, and with celebrity in general, people will just sort of gush all over a person. And and start to act like they should be some sort of representative for what, how everybody should be thinking and acting and feeling. She's just a person like anyone else. Yeah. Like I don't feel I don't feel like you should be using her as part of your you know political imaging when she doesn't seem that interested. And on the flip side, I don't think you should expect her. You should be holding her to higher standards than anybody else. I'm sure there's plenty of people who still like Chris Brown. <laughs> like I don't think that's a sin. Yeah. Even if I didn't agree with it, it's not a huge problem. She's not. I don't recall anyone positioning her as like a women's rights activist or some shit. And like that, that's so. the biggest problem that I have. It's like, yo, she didn't do this to fucking like make a statement. She was just somebody who was like, you know, dealing with grief. Right. And chose that as her vice. I mean, if she were to go and get drunk and get caught speeding. Are you going to like make her a martyr for like this is wrong? People grieve it like she should be able to drive drunk if she want to or anything like that, you know. So that's that's she, my first issue with like this. if you break a rule, like I think I do agree that there's a conversation to be had about the actual rule because as a non-performance drug that is shown to have no um impact on um on the athlete's ability to perform immediately as far as does it give them an advantage if she like smoked like not like she smoked weed and she went to fucking run track she was just going to kill everybody on the court so you know if you want to have that argument like why is marijuana on this list you know we can have that discussion keep her out of it but we could discuss, like, yeah, mar- you guys being fucked up over marijuana and, like, taking her opportunity. Should y'all still be doing that? Like, come on. That's one thing. But to make this a whole thing about the legalization and all of that, it's like, yo, she wasn't going out there putting, like, her two cents in on whether or not everybody should be able to like go and buy and smoke weed freely. Yeah. That's a serious. Uh, And the fact that they tried to even like make it worse with the whole thing I sent you about Joe Biden, where somebody like just basically edited a clip of him saying like, you know, well, she broke the rules and they just left it at that. And then April Ryan, who's an actual real reporter, thankfully, who come, came up during time where reporters actually really want to just be reporters and not just be famous and get attention. 
um, was like, no, the full quote was she broke the rule. The rules are the rules, but the question is whether or not it should be a rule or not. And that'll be the discussion that we will have over this. Sure. But like I said, like, I don't... <laughs> I don't think she should be subject to a certain level of scrutiny when she's not subject subjecting herself to it on purpose. That's one. Two, like I remember Biden got a little crap because of his statement was pretty similar. It's like, you know, rules are rules. Now should those be the rules, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's a fair statement. Yeah. The, the, the rules exist. And if we want to change them, that's fine. But it at present they exist and they ought to be enforced. She did do that. Cause I remember somebody was having a discussion about context and they mentioned the context of the, you know, this woman was going through grief, uh, I believe over losing her mother and that's terrible. And I understand that. And it's not like I begrudge her or anything. I don't think she's evil for, you know, trying to deal with the grief and using it with a pretty tame uh, recreational drug or anything like that. I, I don't have any moral uh, beef with her over anything she did. But it is the rule. Like, if, if the rule was you, you can't wear the color red when you walk into a building and you come in wearing the color red, maybe that's a stupid rule, but it is the rule. Oh, let's take it to an extreme. You want to say, you know, takes this shit into context. Okay, fine. I go out and I shoot three people. I do this the day, say I did this the day after my mom died. Should you give me some slack? Like, you know, because I'm grieving. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just not feeling. I'm not in my right mind. Somebody made me upset. I just start the shooting. Come on, guys. Take it into context. You can't arrest me for murder. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, based, based and again, your... I know that's an extreme, but at the same time, like, pare it down to something simple. Pare it down to me, you know... I fucking like I'm speeding and the cop decides to give me a ticket. He ain't going to be like, yo, I'm just driving. You were just driving fast because your mom died. So I'm going to take it in context and not like not hit you for not following the rules. No, that's not how rules work. But based on your statement, she did get a lighter punishment that she otherwise right. could have gotten. So it may, it may well have been... giving her an opportunity to be able to participate in the Olympics. If the, like, you know, Olympic team chose to do so. So they already didn't punish her to the extent they could have. Personally, I would argue that's wrong. I think if the rule is three months, it should have been three months. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's harsh of me, but I think it's that not inconsistency really harsh. is a problem. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not really harsh because then you bring up the idea of like, okay, there's a slight bit of favoritism, and there's like that right. could, which is kind of athletically imbalanced, and oddly, in a like ironic thing, like you're giving their team the opportunity to have an athletic advantage over the other team by allowing her to be able to still perform in some of the events. Like when I heard you say that, my first thought was, if she was a less strong athlete, would they have done that? You know what I mean? Like, if it feels like because you want her to participate and help with your chances of success, that might have been a yeah, factor. Yeah, they kind of caved that's into kind of a the problem. fucking vocal minority that was screaming. And that too, so it's like... And the reason the reason I say that they should have done the three is not because I hate her or whatever. Like I said, I don't have any beef with her. I don't think, you know... Yeah. And I'm sympathetic to what happened there. But, um, but that's the when rule. you're inconsistent with how you apply rules... Right. You invite criticism when you do try to, because if you do this now, you know, you give her the one month and somebody else fucks up similarly and you give them three, you now have to make the case for why she got one and they get three. Right. Because you know, now you're just causing problems by not applying the rules consistently. So I'm not trying to sound like a dick about it, but you should be consistent and actually apply them if you're going to have them at all. And in the bigger conversation about marijuana use i do find it frustrating that we're uh, i don't know that anybody most people really think of marijuana as like a real problematic drug at this point you know i mean like most of society seems to have like i say most a good amount of society has kind of like 
no. moved on from pretending marijuana is like cocaine, you know? Right. Like, because ironically enough, she was in Oregon at the time that she was tested in court and she did it. Oregon being a state that has legalized marijuana. But even so that, the fact she that was so, like she wasn't breaking the law, she was just breaking the rules. <laughs> yeah, which is a weird like kind of just and I'm not saying this to like be one of those people arguing for why she should be performing. I'm just saying like I found that a funny thing. But even that weird mismatch of you know something being legal at the state level and not federal and shit like that. It's like it, it, the reason I bring up social feeling toward marijuana is to say it feels like the law just refuses to catch up with social sentiment. Like most people don't seem to care as much yet. There's still plenty of people in prison over past marijuana use and distribution. You have stupid cases like this. And, and, and I, I realize that there's a difference between, you know, the law around marijuana use and whatever rules this organization has, you know, the, I can't remember the name of this Olympic committee or whatever they are. I know it's not the same thing as the law, so it's not like the legal system's going to do anything about that per se, but their rules and laws and all that stuff need to catch up with social sentiment because this is stu- stupid. I mean, even now, I, marijuana must still be a class one, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Which impacts all kinds of stuff, like researching marijuana to see how it can be used for health purposes. Because like, even people who, like, I, I know people who smoke marijuana, and we'll talk about health benefits and all that shit. And I'm like, we really don't know that much because it's considered a class one drug, so you can't really just research it like that. Like, we don't have good research behind it because it takes quite a bit to sure. get access to it. I mean, because people there have been research though over the world that has found things like it's oddly enough. I was listening to somebody uh, mention how, like, athletically speaking, marijuana is actually good to use if you um, want to gain muscle, as it helps, like, it, you know, you recover quicker because it helps with your recovery and you're able to work out more efficiently if you use marijuana. So you can gain muscle mass you know, faster. I think I said class one. I meant schedule one. But yeah, schedule. Uh, the, the legal classification of it causes issues with researchers trying to gain access to research it. Right. It, like, there's so many issues around, like I said, that and the difference between federal and state laws around it. Like it's stupid the number of people still in prison this case it, it just it's just a painful reminder that we're still right. stupid about this issue yeah so like, it is still a schedule one drug but this is where marijuana sits at where it sits with so schedule one drugs include heroin lsd marijuana mescaline mdma ghb ecstasy uh, Salocyphin, synthetic marijuana, uh, meth, uh, quaaludes. Uh, I can't say meth, methoqualone, but it's quaaludes. That's what quaaludes are. A uh, cot. Um, if you ever heard of cot, you, you know that's some fucked up shit. And bath salts. That's a weird collection. But like marijuana is on a list of things that like I would say probably outside of LSD, because LSD is something that's kind of naturally um, can be naturally produced too. Bath salts is on the list, <laughs> but like it's with a bunch of like other manufactured shit that can really really fuck you over, and it has no impact that they have. Like I said, it's been proven medically that marijuana can be beneficial. I mean, I've known someone who's been on medicinal med- uh, marijuana and wouldn't be able to, you know, live her life because she has um, fibroids, which can be very, very painful. 
and are hard to like remove from the body. Even when removed, you can still have side effects from it. And to avoid like basically like super like um, inhibiting pain all her life, it's you know best that she smoked marijuana. Is um, perhaps I was going to ask if smoking is inherently the best way to get that, but uh, I think smoke. I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure smoking is. It may be something about smoking it, inhaling it, gets it into your bloodstream faster. I'm not sure. Like, I, but again, like you said, we don't necessarily have a full understanding of the science of it because it's something that a lot of people don't haven't allowed for research until recently over because it being a schedule one drug i mean i'm, I'm willing to accept it it's I, it's things like like i have friends who, who smoke weed who will be like well you know it's not bad for you or whatever i'm like i find it hard to believe taking that thing into your lungs has no effect at all like I think what I think where you're probably thinking about is the fact that they're using roll like some people use rolling paper and mix it with tobacco because marijuana itself isn't like smoking smoking you it doesn't like you know have all the properties that you do from cigarettes the problem is a lot of people pack their shit with you know tobacco or they- I mean you're inhaling us some kind of particles into your lungs in general. I'm not yeah, saying it's, it's as plant. bad as cigarettes. That's what I'm saying, so. but it's just this straight plant. You, That's why it's not. You couldn't set a tree on fire and just start now, breathing it the and paper, be fine, right? Like I said, now the paper, maybe that may have some like properties in it, if that's what you mean. I don't know why it'd be But the earth itself, no. Is not. So, I'm just saying, like, you couldn't set a tree on fire and just start breathing in the smoke and expect everything to be fine, right? Yeah, but it's not the same thing. Like they're not made of the same properties. <laughs> That's the thing. Like they're plants, but not all plants are necessarily, you know, necessarily built the same way. I'm not worried about it being like super dangerous, but I get when people say like it just has no effect. I'm like I don't know what you're basing that on, other than just. I mean, I agree. I I would say that it's not as bad as in most things. Like I'm sure there's some negative effect. It's just like, you know. And it might be negligible. There's a I'm, reason I'm, for to put it this way. It's it's probably like I I get what you're saying, but I feel like it's more in line with. There's a reason why we need carbohydrates, and there's also a reason why you shouldn't have too many carbohydrates. Sure, I I'd be willing to accept that it's negligible. I think the point I'm making, and I, why I bring up the research stuff, is there are people who are so pro marijuana that like they will say things that I find okay. difficult to swallow. <laughs> So I would say to you is like, stop listening to those people because they're not trying to actually make a sensible argument or have a sensible conversation. They like smoking weed right. and like, you know, love my best friend to death, but I like, he can tell me all the reasons why I should be smoking it and why like he is pro weed, but us like, dude, you like doing that shit. So I it kind of reminds me see you making a real legitimate, you know, counter argument or being able to acknowledge certain things <laughs> like yeah, a medical scientist would. There's times people say stuff and I'm like, it reminds me of when vaping started to become kind of popular when I was younger. And like, I would have people who were like, it's not as bad as smoke. It's, you know, cigarette smoke is bad, but it's just vaping. It's a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so why why is the assumption that just because it's not a cigarette and cigarettes are and bad? I'm glad it, you this is good. brought that up because, like, but it's again, love my best friend to death, but he is one of those people vaping is fine, fine, fine. Like, but everybody knows there's certain chemical like things in there that's bad for you. Like, okay, so you want to know some of the negative health effects of marijuana that people don't necessarily well. Brain health. We've all like heard the joke. You kill brain cells, but yeah, it does cause people to hallucinate, be delusional, disorganized thinking and speech. Gee, that's 
That's something I'm commonly used to hearing from marijuana smokers. Um, you know, heart health, you know, smoke, it, it increases your heart rate. So if, you know, keep that in mind. Mm, if not you, too much. I think it's, I do remember hearing yeah, some of the research you gotta on think that. About not, it. Like, yeah. Think about somebody who has heart like problems. Yeah, you probably really shouldn't be smoking a lot of marijuana. Like, it doesn't do it enough, too much, but I'm sure do anything enough, you know, it's like one drink, everybody always says one drink's not going to kill you, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, drink enough alcohol in enough time and watch what it does. Uh, bone health. Huh. Apparently there can be drops in bone density. And of course, lung health, because, you know, smoking, you know, all, all that heavy intake on your lungs and putting, you know, smoke into your lungs. Like, even if it's not tobacco smoke, that is something that doesn't normally support, like, you know, it's a pollutant to your lungs, no matter what. So it can cause um, bronchitis, chronic coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing. Now, of course, there's also the cancer thing, but that's usually with people who mix it with um, tobacco. Sure. And I, I don't want anyone, you know, listening, thinking that, like, <laughs> cardiac's going to take the weed away because it has fat health things. I just... No, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. <laughs> Be honest. I'm, I'm for legalizing it because so far I don't see any evidence that it's bad enough to warrant a ban but because it's so popular with people like i'll hear some like really biased opinions or or even suggesting some things that are outlandish like i do think it it seems to be helping with like say pain relief for example is one good use that i've heard of maybe in certain cancer treatments i don't know but like people will act like it cures everything it has zero negative impact it's like bro that's hard to believe and i don't think we have the research to justify that statement partially because we treat it like it's a serious drug. So getting the permissions to acquire and research it is not as easy. But no, again, I stress the reason these people argue it is because that's their bag. So they're going to do so. Which again, is one more reason to legalize it. So we can see like maybe it can help with lots of shit. We should see that. If it can be used, it should be used. And I, I can't remember who brought up this point. I think it might have been a researcher I was listening to a, on a podcast, but like, it's weird that it's such a political argument. Like, if your doctor deems that this will be good for your treatment, they should be just, they should just be able to to prescribe that. Like, this shouldn't be part of a le- uh, a political battle as to whether a doctor can use a certain kind of medicine. Maybe in terms of like recreational use, that's a political battle, but in the realm of medicine, that shouldn't have as much sway. But it's always going to. I mean, and I'm on the like same side of the people who make the argument as someone who drinks alcohol. I've seen alcohol do a lot worse damage to human beings, not just its consumption, and what it does to your body, you know, stuff like cirrhosis and things like that. Um, we actually had a family member whose husband had died due to the fact that they were an alcoholic and they had cirrhosis and didn't stop. And what the alcohol did was it completely consumed his liver and they died basically bleeding um you know, toxins from their body because they didn't have a liver to fucking filter that shit. That sounds fucking horrific. Yeah. But that's a legal substance. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, true enough. I'm not going to touch that because I don't want all the alcoholics to come beat me up. <laughs> so. I mean, you're talking to, like, you know, a professional drunk, so. You're safe. I got your back. But I mean, honestly, I, I've used that same statement. Like, not to say that 
alcohol ought to be banned, but just to say, like, if we're willing to tolerate this, I don't see why marijuana <laughs> is the problem. Right. If that's it, because you know, people always will talk about like drunk driving. Like, all right, if the, if that's a risk we're willing to tolerate in everyday society, then clearly we're not being consistent here. Yeah, I mean, so I know we've gone far off of like the original subject, which you know this is part of it, but it wasn't the like. It, so people need to just chill. Let this girl live her life. She ain't she like. She wasn't worried about like your cause before. So let her like do her thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people talk about, you know, context. Well, she said that the context for her was grieving her mom, not making a political statement for you. Mm-hmm. So not at all. She wasn't trying to become, you know, this ongoing like discussion for you guys. You you guys can have that debate without including her. <laughs> right. You've been having it all this time. Let her live. And stop trying to say we're going to ban the Olympics. You know, all that. Like, if you want to have, like, serious, like, discussions of reasons why, you should probably, like, you know, boycott the Olympics and stuff like that. Take these stories, for instance. The Nigerian track team had to pull out, or they decided to pull out of the Olympics. As the... Olympic committee was going to possibly come down on them because a couple of the, uh, it's the female um, Olympic track team. The females tested for higher testosterone than others. There is scientifically based cases where African and African-American females tend to test higher in testosterone than Caucasian. But the Olympic teams were, the Olympic committee were um, questioning whether or not they were actually women, basically. That's pretty much why they test the testosterone thing because they don't want anybody to like not be a natural female competing. Uh, in certain what events, fuck? I guess. Um, yeah. The fact that they even test for such a thing. Oh my god. Yeah, which I do believe there is a transgender um, athlete, but I, of course, it's in something like weightlifting, which I find highly offensive in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, you can go ahead and be strong women, but <laughs> no running for that you. Could be. Uh... <laughs> That's just a gross story all around. <laughs> so you have that. And then you have the other one, which is um, kind of really stupid, is that uh, <sighs> the Olympic Committee has banned uh, a particular brand of female um swimming caps, swim caps that helped, you know, keep the women's hair from getting fucked up. These particular caps are pretty much only worn by African and African-American women. It's to protect natural hair. Their claim is that it causes an athletic advantage How's that? I guess because maybe it's smoother in material and makes them swim faster. Like, I don't know. I guess they think they it turns their heads into bullets, bullet like tops, and they can torpedo their way through the water better. Mind you, we've only had, which would happen the last uh, Olympics, one African American woman win a gold medal, win a, a medal at all. <laughs> in Olympic history. So I guess they want to stop the trend. Even if that was true, could, I mean, if that was actually true and it actually gave you an advantage, I would assume the other women could also just wear the same cap, right? (laughs) Yes, they could. 
So that's not really a good reason. No, it's not. Especially since everybody wears swim caps. And you can make the argument that shit happens for everybody. I mean, most male swimmers shave their heads bald and still wear the swim caps. Every little bit counts, I guess. <laughs> Fuck. So yeah, it's like if you just make the regulation, make that the regulation cap. Sure. I think uh, what's his name? John Oliver. By the recently... way, just a tip. If you've ever watched swimming and you've ever listened to people talk about swimming, your cap ain't going to help you. It's all about your muscle strength. Really? You need to be strong as fuck to pull your whole entire body through the water. Your head's not going, your head being aerodynamic alone isn't going to help. <laughs> Come on, people. Jesus, right. I mean, most of the muscles are in the head. But, uh, yeah, I think John Oliver had a, a special recently, probably, on the Olympic Committee. Uh, that has plenty of fucked up things. So, oh no, they're uh, again. There's, there's lots of you want to have a reason to ban the uh, Olympics. The Olympic, you know, you know, the IOC is fucking dirty and disgusting, though. Oh my god, look up the history of the IOC, and you'll probably need to take a shower five minutes in. It's pretty bad. Yeah, there's there's plenty of ammunition. I don't think you need to. Uh... <laughs> Go there. That said, we're all probably still watching the Olympics, so. Well, and that's the funny part about all these people screaming and hollering about the whole marijuana thing. Like, you're still going to be the same people tweeting about how you love Simone Biles and seeing her beat the shit out um, people. Honestly, even when people say that they were going to ban the Olympics or whatever, like, how many of you are really that engaged? You're probably going to start watching it when it starts, but like, how many people really think much about Olympic athletes outside of when it's happening? Like to me, like saying you're you're gonna, you know, boycott the Olympics. It's not. That's not like saying you're gonna boycott the NFL, which I didn't believe either when people said that. But like, that I don't explain. Like the Olympics is a big deal, but only when it's happening. Otherwise. Let's not all pretend we think about the Olympics year round. Unless you're training to be in the Olympics, maybe you think about it more. But... Yeah. Nobody really thinks about it. No. Like I said, it's that one thing that comes up every fucking four years that just seems to capture your interest. Because I will say, like, Olympic, Olympic coverage is probably some of the best media coverage not just sports media but media coverage that you'll ever see because they are they're able to capture the stories and put them on display and make you connect like very very well to where you become personally invested in a lot of these things that in a way that you would have never thought you would have ever done so you know all i'm saying is i don't remember a time where somebody like more than a month or so ahead said I can't wait for the Olympics. <laughs> no, you don't. That, that's why I say they're covering such a weird thing for somebody to seriously say I'm going to boycott the Olympics. Like Yeah, that's... because you probably didn't care about it as much as you think you did. I want those same people to you know look me in the eye and honestly say before that story with that woman that they were even like, thinking about the Olympics. I heard P Diddy tweeted tweeted out that he feels like the Olympics treats our African American athletes like slaves. One, I sincerely doubt P. Diddy knows what the Olympics is. <laughs> yeah. You know. Two, as they said on the podcast, I heard them say this. It is a highly ridiculous claim for P. Diddy to talk about somebody being treated like slaves when his history of how he's treated as artists is akin to fucking like in you know indentured servitude at the least but more akin to probably fucking slavery 
or the slavery that he's claiming the Olympics is doing. Well, hypocrisy knows no bounds. Especially with P. Diddy. Fucking, oh my God. If they ain't going to give us what we want, we ain't voting, y'all. Motherfucker, you created Rock the Vote with people to encourage people to vote. Now you're telling people not to vote. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Fucking idiot. But again, but you're a rich person, so of course you get away with that shit. Somehow your opinion matters. Listen, look, stop looking at celebrities like they're these. They're inherently like wise, and we need to think, you know, care about what they think. <laughs> like, I'm not saying celebrities are inherently dumb, but they're not inherently geniuses either. Yeah, no. Oh, that's that's probably the other thing. It's like you're making these people into, um, you know, as you said before, you're making these people into your heroes and stuff like that. You don't want to like do that because they could turn out being Bill Cosby. Same thing with any celebrity. All of them. So, man, when I think of this woman, like I, I think I argued part of the reason this story got so much play was because she was getting attention before that happened. And I was like, all the people who got on that train with her and loved her and all that stuff, they, they probably couldn't tell you one. They probably couldn't even tell you what her voice sounds like. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I doubt they've seen her in any media coverage or anything and knows what she sounds like and what she believes in and her personality. Outside and all that of shit. what they've seen tweeted or whatever about her, nobody knew. Like, uh, yo, I'm 100% honest. Again, it's only because it's the Olympic season I know that she's around because they made a big deal of the fact that she won her olympic trials nobody talks about track and field unless you're a track and field athlete or former track and field athlete you ain't covering track and field to know who she is right like so stop stop i'm just saying like you do not know her bro like leave her alone yeah the same thing with every celebrity you do not know like i think as a quick wrestling thing i think i saw something might have been Sasha Banks somebody i shouldn't say her name because i wasn't sure but somebody being like anti-vax or whatever i'm like you don't know these people brother people they're perfectly capable of having the same stupid ideas the rest of you have all right <laughs> and, uh, it's crazy i just saw a clip of somebody with one of the fireworks sticking out of their underwear and it burned their ass and i'm glad that that happened. And I want you guys to know that because we started off mentioning the 4th of July. And I hope none of you did nothing stupid, but if you did, I hope you learned your lesson and don't do it again. Yeah, and hopefully it didn't cost your life. Like, or something severe. Like, come on, people. Also, teach your kids better and not have them running around blowing up shit days after um goddamn fourth of july that is the most annoying thing in the world to me about fourth that's why i I generally as i've gotten older just don't care for fourth of july because the aftermath is just ridiculous like how many fireworks did you need to buy and why are you still blowing them up a week later jesus christ (laughs) it's fucking ridiculous but all right. So, before we end, do you have anything to suggest to read? I'm afraid I've been consumed with traveling all week. Well, so. it's okay because Barack Obama took care of that for you. The other day, Barack Obama released his annual uh, summer reads and his summer songs. So, would you like to hear the books that he recommends for you to read? If X Men isn't on them, then he's trash. Well, I guess he's trashed it. So, At Night, All Blood is Black by David Diop. 
Um, it is a book about a Senegali soldier experience with fighting for the French during World War I. Um, Land of Big Numbers. I think you mentioned that, haven't you? Yep. Yep. By Taiping Chen. Uh, that is on his list. You know, uh, Empire of Pain by Patrick Randon Keefe. Um, it talks about the Sackler family, uh, the people who found uh, Pharma. Family members found Pharma. So that's an interesting one. Uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I feel like you've mentioned that too. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, it's a science fiction novel. Um, oh, then definitely not. I haven't read any. Yeah. <laughs> Land of Big Numbers was the first fiction I read in a while, and I didn't know it was fiction when I started. Yeah. Uh, when We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labout. Labout. I can't say his name, so I'm not going to fuck it up. Just look up the title. Um, and it tells stories of scientists and mathematicians throughout history. So, nerd. you know, yeah, it's right up your alley. What? I'm not a nerd. You know you want to read about Albert Einstein, Fritz Haber, and Alexander Rothendieck. Nope. You know you do. Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future by Elizabeth Colbert. Uh, Examines the way humankind has impacted Earth. So if you want to learn how like you fucking shit up, you better read that book. I'm sure it's Stop all positive. Fucking shit up. All right. Things we lost to the water. Uh -uh. It's the story of a Vietnamese immigrant who moves to New Orleans by Eric uh, Nguyen. So that should be pretty interesting. Um, Especially if they moved uh, to New Orleans in the 70s. That would be horrible, the way people treated them back then. Uh, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. It's a story about two families, one black, one white, who meet in the context of a looming disaster. So that should get a lot of people like talking. Uh, Clara and the Sun by Kazui. Ishiguro, uh, hmm, it's about artificial intelligence. That might be interesting. Nerds. Uh, huh? Nerds. No, well, it's not about the nerd part because sadly, well, maybe it is the nerd part because sadly, maybe think about shit like the discussions we had about um, Detroit become human. <laughs> So, yeah. Not as nerdy as you think, but yeah, nerdy. All right. The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Uh, it's a fictional novel about the end of Civil War. And it's about um, two uh, emancipated brothers and a couple um a Confederate soldier, Confederate soldiers, deeply in love. Interesting. Ooh, that's not going to sit well with some people in the south. Um, and intimacies by Katie Kitamura. So those are the books that Obama wants you to read, or that he suggests that you read. Now I won't go through all of his songs. Because it's actually a list of 38 songs. Um, so that would take forever. But do you want to hear some of the songs that are on his list? Yeah, this is some of the key ones, yeah. Uh, I don't know. So I don't know how key they would be for you. It's funny because I knew he came up with these lists only because of a retweet by the first person on the list who, like, had crying emojis because she was so overwhelmed that she was on his list. Uh, Pick Up Your Feelings by Jasmine Sullivan. But it's an interesting mix of hip-hop, soul, jazz, 
all types of shit. Like he has holding back the years by simply red, which anybody who don't know that song, you need to listen to the song. That is one of the best songs ever, in my opinion. Most people don't know the name of it though, because they have you ever heard the song? Um, but it'd be like, I keep holding on. Not certain. You probably although I guess I on. thought. But if you've heard it's one of those songs, like if you heard it, you know it. But nobody really knows the name is holding back. They just think I it's I keep holding on. Because he literally just says like holding back the years like once or twice in the whole damn song. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> but anyway. Uh I guess I assumed it was gonna be new stuff. <laughs> no, he does have new stuff because he has amigos on there. He has Rihanna. Uh he has Sabrina Claudio. He has um some Bruno Mars on there. You know. Uh some Jay Z. Some Stevie okay, so Wonder. From this year, I meant. Well, I thought you said it was a yearly list. Yeah, every year he comes up with his favorite songs to listen to during the summer. And it cha- generally cha- okay. it changes. No, I misunderstood because I thought all the books and all that. Because The Land of Big Numbers is new. Like it just came out well, recently. And it kind of makes more sense, though, that you would have fairly more recent books on the list. Because a couple of books, they're like four or five years old. So they're not okay. new. They're not okay. all new. Um, I misunderstood the nature of the list. I thought no, all of the it had to be of, like... Okay, so yeah, the yeah. nature of his yearly list is just the things that he has, like, as far as the books, there are things that he's read recently that he thinks that other people will okay. enjoy. The summer playlist is just the, his soundtrack for the summer. Like, we all have our soundtrack, and we all have our mixtapes. This is his summer mixtape for this okay. year. That makes sense. So that's why it's not just like him just dropping a bunch of new stuff. Because he has like the Rolling Stones, um, Miles Davis, things like that. He got J. Cole, Neighbors by J. Cole. Uh, you know, Find a Way, her featuring Lil Baby, like Once the Knees by Drake, Ella Fish, Gerald, Lush Life. You know, it bounces all over. Every It's fascinating because, like, yo. This man has such an eclectic style. It's so wild to see Ella Fitzgerald on the list with the Migos, you know? Why isn't Fozzie on the list? Because he actually has good taste. Um, Hater. That, huh? Hater. Man. But yeah. Um, so... Go on his Twitter if you want to see because he posts all his stuff. He posted it uh, a few days ago on his Twitter. Um, he usually does, always does it after the 4th, so, yeah. I'll definitely pick one of them and go through them. I was going to say, though, like, it, it must be wild to have worked on something that, like, the president everybody actually likes yeah that's why I, I can understand why jasmine sullivan would react that way online to see in her name especially first on the list of the you know former president of the united states not only just the former president of the united states but let's be honest one of the more beloved presidents former presidents of the united states yeah so yeah that that's Trump pretty has to release his <laughs> So there's no books on it. But, well, you know. no, I don't want to see his music list. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, I like listening to the Imperial Death March in the Star Wars movies. I don't think that works as something that you should listen to all the time, though. You know, that would make me think some things about you. All right, you got like a nice hefty list there, guys. It didn't include X Men, so it's trash list. But trash is okay too. Check it you out. You know what? Tweet him and see if he has a comic book list. If he doesn't, he's trash. This is why he didn't fix World Hunger. And I, you need to tweet him and see that now. I need to. I, I really feel like there should be a campaign and like ask like Obama or something, and ask him if he listened to. I mean, if he read comic books, and if so, what's his favorite comic book? Character. What is his comic book suggestion? 
If he doesn't, he needs to start. He ain't, he ain't got those presidential duties keeping him busy anymore. He got all the time in the world. Nah, he has a fine ass wife that got his attention. I she's think he's busy enough. enough. God damn. She has a podcast. She's she's living a life. He's probably just sitting yeah, on his after ass. After those two hours, though. You just sit on his ass. Not reading X Men right now. Like a jackass. Sad I say that, even though I just saw him. <laughs> I don't know where he said it, but somebody he was talking about like the, the things that concern him most, and he was talking about the speed of misinformation or whatever. So I say that knowing he is still kind of out there, <laughs> but yeah. still, fuck him. Oh, because he's not a fan of your Charles Xavier. I can't even hate because like I I have suggested one of the books that's also on his list, so. <laughs> That makes it kind of harder to shit on its list because I had the same suggestion. All right, you have the same taste as this man, so shut up. <laughs> I got like when you said that, I was like, "Damn, I kind of wish he didn't say that." Because like immediately, I was waiting to shit on his <laughs> list. Can't shit on yourself, sir. Can't shit on yourself. I'm not gonna lie, I probably still would have if you hadn't said it out loud. Hey, didn't you suggest that one? <laughs> If there's a frequent listener to the podcast, I'm sure they could have made that mention too. So there you go. Plans ruined. Yep. He's still a hero. You can never villainize him because now you identify with him. Damn. That sucks. <laughs> Turns out I was Lex Luthor all along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and watching. Remember, you can catch this on SoundCloud if you just want to listen to it and not look at our cool comic book pictures, which, by the way, a cool comic book movie came out, Black Widow. It was good. Um, I ain't trying to, like, put it in the upper pantheon of MCU movies, but it was a good movie. That's all I can say about it. Um, Solid. Yeah, see? So, yeah. Need something to watch? Go watch that. If you feel the need to go to the movies to watch it, please, for the love of God, be vaccinated. and Make sure to, you know, adhere to the rules. Don't go someplace that's packing people in. We still have a pandemic. Um, By which, the time... Oh, shit. I forgot to mention the other thing about the Olympics. Just really quick. You know, the other thing that people should be concerned about the Olympics is the fact that there's going to be no fans because Japan is close to hitting a thousand people a day contracting COVID again because of the Delta variant. So they banned fans from all events in the Olympics, which we'll get into more later um, next week as we get closer to the Olympics because that's going to be a big deal. Sending thousands of people to compete in a place that seems to be becoming, you know, the next uh, ground zero for a start of another wave in this whole thing. So just keep in mind, this shit ain't over yet, y'all. It ain't over. That's going to make it weird to watch. Yeah. I was just going to say, by the next (laughs) podcast, the end, I think it's the last episode of Loki, so there's that to look forward to, too, Wednesday. Ooh, yes. I can't wait. All right. Check that shit out. Yeah, stop being a hater because you didn't get what you want. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next time on The Reason We're Born. Peace. Jesus, 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 Jesus.